So welcome to the Karthik Purnima uh, meditation. And I would take uh, about 15, 20 minutes um, uh, to explain the significance why Karthik Purnima is so powerful. It is by far the most uh, auspicious spiritual uh, month for spiritual uh, sadhana or uh, practices. And in fact, um, it, uh, you know, in our scriptures, they say that the whole year you should be doing spiritual practices. If you cannot do the whole year, then you should do it in Dakshinayan. And I'll explain that further. That is the six months uh, starting from uh, July through December. If you cannot do these six months, then the three months, Ashwini, Kartika, and Margasira. Uh, if you cannot do these three months, then Kartika. If you cannot do the whole month of Kartika, the last five days, Panchuka. If you cannot do those five days, Kartik Purnima, if you do, you are done. You accumulate with very little effort. You can harvest enormous spiritual uh, uh, benefits and uh, energy. And in all the scriptures, but particularly in Skanda Purana and Padma Purana, there is spe a special mention of how special this Kartik uh, month is. And to understand this, we really have to understand the concept of Uttarayan and Dakshinayan. It's very important because the whole year is divided into two uh, sections. The Uttarayan is from January to June when the sun is uh, in a northerly uh, movement. Sun, of course, doesn't moon, uh, move, but we see it as such. We perceive it that way. When the energy and strength and radiance of sun is at its peak and sun is our energy, our soul, it, uh, everything comes naturally. And Dakshinayan is from from July to December, when the sun uh, is in the southerly direction, the radiance, the energy, the power of sun is going down. The nights are getting darker, longer and darker, and the days are getting shorter and uh, less, uh, um, you know, has less energy of the sun. Now, Uttarayan means Ut, Ut uh, and Tara, Uttara uh, Ayana. Ut means highest, Tara means good. Ayana is movement towards it. So whatever you do, Uttarayan means it is. it stays at the highest. You cannot really do much to increase anymore because it's already at the highest. So that leaves us at Dakshinayan, which is the root word is Dakshata. Dakshata is capability. Capability of what? Of our spiritual practices. Because there is a natural tendency of earth at this time of the year of nature of prakriti for the energy because sun is becoming less the power of the sun energy of the sun is less days are shorter nights are longer there is a huge pull towards tamasic um, elements meaning our instinctual elements animalistic uh, uh, instinct becomes stronger so the whole world the whole earth goes towards inertia and uh, um, uh, hibernation. So that is when our rishis, our um, uh, you know uh, uh, saints and rishis, told us this is the time we really need to do tremendous sadhana to uh, get out of this um, instinctual living and stay at a intentional living. So uh, another way of understanding this is the uttarayan is called the kaivalya pada. Kaivalya is enlightenment, moksha liberation and dakshinayan is called the sadhana pada sadhana is purification so it's pretty much like whatever you sow in these months is what you're going to harvest in the uttarayan months and our uh, four purusharthas that are said uh, that are recommended in our shastras uh, dharma, artha, kama, moksha these are the four basic things that a soul a human being uh, strives for and they are also connected to this concept. So north is associated with moksha, east is associated with dharma, south is associated with karma, and west is associated with kama. So south, dakshin, is associated with karma. What kind of karma? This, this is the sadhana they are talking about. So this sadhana, whatever little you put in, in these six months or three months or one month or five days or one day, Kartik Purnima, very easily you can accumulate and reap tremendous spiritual uh, uh, benefits to be enjoyed in the Kaivalya Pada, which is the, in Uttarayan, which is from January to uh, June. 
So that is why it is very important to understand that these months, this uh, Ashwini, Kartikeya, and uh, Ma, uh, uh, Mriga uh, Shira, which is coming in December, Margasira uh, month, it starts with the Sharadya Navratri. The, the rishis have told us that the earth and the energies are pulling you down. Start, uh, um, you know, uh, cleansing yourself and focusing on your intentional living, not instinctual living. After that comes Diwali. Diwali, you have to understand, is the darkest uh, um, night of the year, is the darkest uh, Amavasya, uh, no moon, new moon of the year. And unlike other Amavasyas, new moon, every new moon is dark, but this is the darkest of them all because there is a natural tendency of earth to pull everything down into a tamasic, into an inertia hibernating uh, stage. So what did our saints do to, uh, you know, uh, pushback, they created a wonderful festival from the top of the country to the bottom, north to south, east to west. They said collectively, everybody light, uh, you know, light a lamp to push back this uh, negative energy, push back. And light also, you have to understand, uh, in, in our uh, um, um, shastras, uh, hell is called narka. Narka means na arka. Na is no, arka is light. Because if there is no light, you cannot really perceive anything. And that is why light is considered a, a, a symbol or represents um, awareness, consciousness, wisdom, enlightenment. So we have to try extra hard to, to keep our awareness and consciousness high. And there's a cluster of fe uh, festivals around this time, uh, starting from um, uh, Sharadya Navratri, Diwali, uh, Kojagari Puja, uh, Kali Puja, uh, Kartik Purnima, and all these even um, um, Jains have a um, powerful time. Mahavira was born, I think. Guru Nanak was born. So this is generally a very powerful time for spiritual practices. Now, how do we, and, and when we light a lamp, we are communicating to our self, our higher self and all the energies outside that I have set an intention to go towards enlightenment, not towards darkness, to go towards wisdom, not towards ignorance. So you are, it's a clue. It's saying that, okay, I mean, I'm going from instinctual animalistic living to intentional living. So that is the uh, uh, concept. Why these three months? Because after Diwali, it's very difficult to, uh, um, uh, if you don't make any uh, effort to keep your um, uh, spiritual energies high. So you understand about uh, um, uh, the Dakshinayan, the Dakshata. We have to have Dakshata is capability. Our spiritual Dakshata, we have to try very hard. And this month is um, uh, uh, Karthika uh, month. In all traditions, all cults is very powerful. Whether you come from the Shaivite tradition, you come from the Vaishnavite tradition, or you come from the Shakti tradition, the divine feminine tradition. In the Shaivite tradition, it's called Kartik Mas. In the Vaishnavite tradition, it's called the Damodar Mas. And in the Shakti tradition, you have all these pujas, Kojagari Puja, Kali Puja, Lakshmi Puja, Sharadya Puja. So this uh, time is very powerful. Now let's start with... Um, the Kartik Mas. Kartik stands for Lord Kartikeya, and we have discussed this before. Kartikeya was, when he was born, he was nourished by six mothers until uh, Parvati came and made him one. They are called the uh, six Kritikas. And these Kriti, Kriti and uh, Kartikeya refers to action, karma. And these six uh, mothers nourished Kartikeya. And Kartikeya stands for what? for wisdom, it to, to uh, uh, remove ignorance. What are the six practices, spiritual practices that can help us increase our wisdom and decrease our ignorance? These six practices are called, are not called, are uh, recommended. Vrat, which is observation, uh, uh, you know, any kind of fasting you do. Vrat, puja, any kind of worship. Then you do dana, any kind of charitable uh, donations or work. Then you do dhyana, which is meditation. Then you do japa, chanting and tapa, some kind of austerities, getting up early in the morning, taking a cold water bath, eating one meal a day, eating restricted uh, um, uh, food, not all kinds of food. So these uh, uh, four, uh, six practices, these six sadhanas will help us uh, uh, reap the, go to the Kaivalya Pada in Uttarayan. So they are, what are these? These are called Vrat, Puja, Tapa, Japa, 
and um, um, dhyana and dana. That's why it's very important to do these things. And he's called Kartikeya because of this. If you do these six uh, sadhanas, you will have the wisdom like Kartikeya. Kartikeya is also known as Subramanyam. Now, Subramanyam is Brahman. Brahman is Veda. Veda is script knowledge, sacred knowledge. Uh, Brahman, uh, uh, Brahmanyam is anybody who uh, is walking the path of the Vedas, of the spiritual knowledge. Subramanyam is somebody who is walking the path beautifully. And how do you walk the path of the Vedas? By these six practices. Uh, uh, vrata, puja, tapa, uh, japa, and uh, dhyana and dana. These are the, these six practices have been told that during this month, this Kartika Purnima, at least, if you do little bit of this, you can reap enormous benefits in the next um, uh, in the Uttarayan phase. So that is about um, uh, Kartikeya. Now, it uh, from the Gaudiya tradi tradition, which is the Vaishnavite tradition, this is called the Damodarmas. Krishna's own uh, uh, month is actually Margashira, the next one, because in Gita and uh, Shloka 35, I think he uh, says that, uh, I don't know which chapter, I remember this, that Margashira is his own month, but Damodar month is most, uh, 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 you know, he likes it the most. It is most uh, close to him for several reasons. What we have to first understand what Damodar means. Damodar is made up of two words, Dama and Udara. Dama is a rope. A rope to control something and udara is our belly. Now our belly signifies our hunger for material things. And we have to tie this, uh, um, to control this hunger for material things around this time of the year to be able to uh, uh, access that supreme consciousness or spiritual uh, uh, growth. And this is explained by a story in our Puranas where Mother Yashoda ties uh, Krishna and um, with a rope because he's playing with all these, um, uh, um, you know, gopis and uh, creating havoc basically, you know, in, in, uh, in uh, all uh, jest and everything. So <clears throat> Mother Yashoda ties his belly and keeps her close. But the deeper significance is we, the this very Krishna who runs the whole universe and galaxies, we can tie him and keep him close to us with our bhakti, with our uh, um, kirtan, with our love, with our, uh, 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 what should I say, with our all these sadhanas, we can, especially with our love and bhakti, we can keep Krishna tied to us. And the name of Yashoda is very important. Yashoda means yash, yash means glory. Normally, the God or this uh, supreme consciousness gives us yasha. But you know what gives that consciousness glory? It's singing his uh, uh, names, connecting with him through dhyana, through puja, through any kind. When you connect with that consciousness through some spiritual practices, especially chanting and uh, uh, dhyana, then we give glory to the God. Then it's Radha's Radha Rani. They call it Radha Rani, the Gaudiya tradition, Vaishnavite tradition. Damodara month is her month, and her uh, it's also her mother's name is Kirtida. So it's also ties into Kartikeya. And uh, so uh, um, uh, another uh, reason because Radha and uh, Krishna cannot uh, Krishna's name cannot be taken without uh, uh, associating it with Radha. We have to understand what Radha means. If you uh, flip Radha, it becomes Dhara. Dhara means unbroken connection to that supreme consciousness, Krishna consciousness. So that is why in this month, by, we can give glory to Lord Krishna by tying him to us with, uh, with our love and our bhakti. And we can establish an unbroken connection to Krishna through uh, these, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, bhakti practices of chanting and puja and vrat and dana and dhyana, all these kind of things. This, this is uh, ties into the concept of upavasa. And most people think upavasa is a fast, you know, you eat, don't eat or eat certain kinds of food. Upavasa, again, is made up of two words, upa and vas. Upa means near and vas means staying close to. Staying close to what? Staying close to your Atma, your soul, your higher consciousness, which is again the same as Krishna consciousness. And you can do that by this sadhana. What are these sadhanas? Uh, vrat, puja, 
uh, tapa, japa, dana, and dhyana. These are the ways that we can connect with that supreme consciousness and our higher self. And this uh, time of the year gives us a perfect opportunity to do it. Very little, very little if you do. They go into great detail saying how little you can do and how much you can get. So this is the uh, Damodara uh, part of it, Damodara mass. And it is also called Urja Vrat. Urja means your radiance, your uh, energy. And that's, you know, our Rishi is very cleverly named, uh, give name to all these months to remind us that this is the time you have to do this. You have to keep your Urja high, your energy high, your uh, intentional awareness, consciousness, enlightenment high. Otherwise, if you don't do anything, naturally the tendency of the earth and uh, nature and Prakriti will pull you down to animalistic living. So <clears throat> how do we do uh, Urja hai, again, upavas, staying close to our atma, to our higher self by fasting and fasting from food because, again, remember, we have this pancha uh, uh, kosha and uh, fasting from thoughts, all kinds of unnecessary thoughts. You have to fast from that. Uh, fasting from unnecessary activities, fasting from unnecessary uh, frittering your energy, your urja. So they remind us this is not the time for entertainment. This is not the time for, uh, you know, just enjoying. That is in Uttarayan. When the sun is high, naturally our urja is high, our energy is high. We don't have to do much. Ut uh, uh, tara. It's the highest good is already established. Whatever we have sown with our spiritual practices now, we will harvest it in the Uttarayan. We don't have to work very hard in Uttarayan. Automatically, the sun is high, energy is high, spirit is high, everything is high. It is now that we need to put in the sadhana. That's why Dakshinayan is called the sadhana pada, the, your purification you have to do. And Uttarayan is called the kaivalya pada, which is the you will get the enlightenment commensurate with the sadhanas you have done now. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to talk about. And I said, you know, even in Shakti tradition, Lakshmi Puja, Kali Puja, this is Radha's month. So any which way you look at it, whether you're coming from um, uh, uh, Shaivite uh, um, tradition or Vaishnavite tradition or Shakti tradition, this month has been, uh, um, you know, uh, emphasized that please, please put in a little bit of effort, do some chanting, light a lamp, and push back that tamasic natural uh, pull of the earth towards uh, tamasic element, inertia, hibernation, instinctual, animalistic living. So that's why uh, Kartik Punima is so important. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Otherwise, we can... Um, move to uh, our meditation. And I must, um, I must admit that this is a very unusual meditation. I haven't done anything like this before. And I've been for the past month, I've been getting in my meditation guided to do it this way. So we'll see where it takes us. I trust the guidance. And uh, it's more like, um, you know, even though it is popularly known as Kartik Mas, it is also known as Damodara Ma Man. And I have been getting guidance that right now, we need more uh, we need to cultivate bhakti, uh, devotion more than jnana because all of us are very intellectual and we always have this uh, why, 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 you know, and it's good to know, but uh, we cannot, con uh, you know, be, oh, we cannot overcompensate. So uh, jnana has to be balanced with bhakti and today's world, modern world, bhakti is not normally uh, uh, encouraged. We, you know, we just say, oh, we don't do rituals. Oh, we don't like to do this. We just want to know more and more and more. Knowing is okay, but the actual connection comes when you can connect with that concept, that universal energy of love and, and uh, compassion. And that's why today's meditation is a bhajan based, uh, it is also mantra, but a, a bhajan based meditation. And um, we'll see how, where it takes us. Any questions or should we move on to the uh, meditation? I think we should move on to the meditation. We can, of course, after the meditation, there'll be more, another uh, more opportunity to discuss this. So please keep your um, <clears throat> audio uh, on uh, mute so that there's no echo. And um, sit down in a comfortable position that you can maintain for the next 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. <clears throat> okay. Settle down, relax your body and calm your mind. Keep your spine erect 
and find a position that you can stay in for the next 25 minutes. Take a few de deep breaths, inhale, expand, exhale, relax, close your eyes again, inhale, expand, and exhale, relax. I will guide you through a different kind of meditation. Just be open and receive the vibrations of the prayers. Do not sing along. Do not try to understand the meaning of these words. Just allow these series of quantum sounds that have been sanctified over centuries to balance all your chakras. Let us start the journey. Okay. I found this on the web for the quantum really? sounds that have been sanctified. Let us start the journey at the muladhara, the base of your spine. Let us invoke Lord Ganesha to open the door of our muladhara and allow our prakriti, our physical being, to embark on the journey to meet our purusha, our spiritual being. Take a deep breath and receive the vibrations of Lord Ganesha. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha Now, just receive the vibrations of this prayer to request Lord Krishna to be your guide in this life. Just feel the vibrations of this prayer and receive whatever images of Krishna comes to your mind now. Tum dhundo mujhe gopal mein koi gaiya teri Tum dhundo mujhe gopal mein Koi gaiya teri. I am lost, Gopal, the keeper of souls. Please find me, for I have forgotten my way back to your care. Just like you heard all the cows in Vrindavan before it is dusk and bring them home, please find me and take me home to your care. Sudhlo mori gopal mein koi gaiya teri Sudhlo mori gopal ki mein koi gaiya teri O oh, Gopal Please purify my actions, purify my speech, my mind, my senses, my intellect, my habits, and my nature, so that I can remember your glory and receive your grace. Once you set the intention to connect with Lord Krishna, the Lord who can lead you from darkness towards the light of your true self, how do you address him? Receive the vibrations of Krishna with all these names in your Swadhishtana, your sacral chakra. Any or all of these sacred names can connect you to the divine being. Shri Krishna Govinda Hare Murari 
हेनाथ नारायण वासुदेवा श्री कृष्ण गोविंद हरे मुरारे हे नाथ नारायण वासुदेवा श्री with hope and reverence i come to you o krishna the conqueror of darkness govinda the keeper of souls hare the remover of darkness murari the slayer of ego he nath narayan the dear lord who is the abode of all beings vasudeva and the abode of all gods अच्युतम केशव राम नारायण कृष्ण दामोदर वासुदेव हरि अच्युत केशव राम नारायण कृष्ण दामोदर वासुदेव हरि now that you have reestablished your connection to krishna move your attention to your navel area in the manipura chakra think of an area of your life where you are rudderless an area where you have reached the end of your intellect to find a solution to a dilemma or an area of your life where you fear the worst humiliation or the ultimate shame and defeat connect with the feelings and visualize surrendering the situation with your hands up in the surrender position to krishna visualize kneeling down and looking up to krishna and seeing millions of yards of a shining golden fabric flowing down from krishna to you and swirling around you to protect you from any shame humiliation or dishonor and let the vibrations of this prayer saturate your body and mind la jarako giri dhari la jarako giri dhari लाजरखो गिरीधारी लाजरखो गिरीधारी प्लीज प्रोटेक्ट माय ऑनर एंड डिग्निटी गिरीधारी द गिवर ऑफ लिमिटलेस प्रोटेक्शन जैसी लाजरखी अर्जुन की जैसी लाज रखी अर्जुन की भारत युद्ध मझारी जस्ट लाइक यू प्रोटेक्टेड द ऑनर ऑफ अर्जुन इन द मिडल ऑफ द टेरेबल महाभारत सारथी हो के रथ को हा क्यों सारथी हो के रथ को हा क्यों चक्र सुदर शन धारी भक्त की टेक न तारी एस द चैरियटर यू टुक चार्ज ऑफ अर्जुनाज डेस्टिनी ओ विल्डर ऑफ द पावरफुल सुदर्शन चक्र you have never let down a devotee's trust in you jaise laaj rakhi draupad ki jaise laaj rakhi draupad ki like you protected the honor and dignity of draupadi hone na dini ughari you did not allow her to be humiliated or shamed in public ke chat ke chat do bhuj tha ke 
खेचत खेचत दो भुज था के दुशासन पछारी चीर बढ़ायो मुरारी even though the negative energies inside and outside are trying to pull me down but i know that nothing can touch me as long as you are protecting my honor o murari la ja rakho giridhari la ja rakho giridhari please protect my honor and dignity giridhari the giver of limitless protection now move your attention to your heart center at the anahata chakra visualize a good time in your life an achievement an honor a celebration a recognition and gently offer it to krishna with the vibrations of this prayer mera aap ki kripa se sab kaam ho raha hai karte ho tum kanhaiya mera naam ho raha hai मेरा आप की कृपा से सब काम हो रहा है करते हो तुम कन्हैया मेरा नाम हो रहा है विथ योर ग्रेस ओ कृष्णा ओ कन्हैया everything is well in my life you do all the work and yet i get all the credit now think of an area where you are called upon to express your choice your opinion or communicate a decision let the vibrations of this prayer purify your thoughts and your words visualize a situation where you are called upon to say something or a situation where you regret saying something or a situation you don't know what to say now bring your attention to the center of your throat and purify your vishuddhi chakra by letting the vibrations of the following sacred words wash over you this mantra will attract everything to you it will totally transform your communication jay jay radha ramana hari bol jay jay radha ramana hari bol jay jay radha ramana hari bol jai jai radha ramana hari bol hari bol hari bol jai jai radha ramana hari bol जय जय राधा रामण हरि बो विक्ट्री टू राधा द डिवाइन कॉन्सर्ट एंड रमण द लवर ऑफ हरि ही हु टेक्स अवे ऑल सफरिंग बोल स्पीक ओनली अबाउट राधा रमण एंड हरि जस्ट बाय द सेइंग ऑफ दिस मंत्र हरि बोल you can dissolve any blocks in your ability to communicate now think of a situation where you are in a dilemma a situation where you want to create something new but don't know what to do or where to start 
Let the vibrations of this prayer activate your Agnya Chakra, the womb of creation. Let these sacred words activate your masculine energy and your feminine energy and lead you to effortless creation by calling upon the unified energy and power of Radha, the divine feminine, and Madhava, the supreme consciousness. This mantra will attract everything into your life effortlessly. Creation of material abundance and enlightenment will feel like Krishna's enjoyable pastime in the magical groves of Vrindavan. Jai Radha Madhava Jai Kunja Vihari Jai Radha Madhava Jai Kunja Vihari Glory to Radha, the unbroken connection to Krishna. Glory to the Lord of Sweetness. Glory to He who enjoys loving pastimes in the groves of Vrindavan. Jai Gopi Janavalhava Jai Girivaradhari Glory to the beloved of the gopis, the cowherd maidens of Raja, who lead you to Giridhari, the giver of limitless protection. Finally, bring your attention to your crown chakra at the top of your head, your connection to Krishna and to divinity. Let the vibrations of the following prayer connect you to Krishna, Vishnu, Narayana, in everything you do. Shuklam Bharam Dharam Vishnu Sashi Varnam Chatur Bhujam Prasanna Vadanam Dhyaye Sarva Vigno Pashantaye Meditate on Sri Vishnu who is wearing white clothes, who is all pervading, who is bright in appearance like the moon and who has four hands who has a compassionate and gracious face. Meditate on him to ward off all obstacles. Shantakaram bhujagashayanam padmanabham suresham vishwadharam gaganasadrusham meghavarnam subhangam Lakshmi Kantam Kamalanayanam Yogi Bhidyanagamyam Vande Vishnu Bhavabhayaharam Sarvalokai Kanatham Salutations to Sri Vishnu, who has a serene appearance, who rests on a serpent, Adisesha, who has a lotus on his navel, and who is the Lord of the Devas, who sustains the universe, who is boundless and infinite like the sky, whose color is like the cloud, bluish, dark, bluish, and who has a beautiful and auspicious body, who is the husband of Devi Lakshmi, whose eyes are like lotus, and who is attainable to the yogis by meditation. Salutations to that Vishnu, who removes the fear of worldly existence and who is the Lord of all the planes. Aushate chintaye vishnum bhojane cha janardhanam vivahe cha prajapatim yudhe chakradharam devam pravase cha trivik Narayanam Tanu Tyage Sridharam Priya Sangame Dushwapne Smaragovindam Sankate Madhusudhanam Kanane Narasimhamcha 
पावकेशाइनम जल मध्य वराहम च पर्वते रघुनंदनम गमने वन चर्वकारु माधव when taking medicine think of vishnu as the all pervader when taking food think of him as janardana the destroyer of evil evil when in bed think of him as the lotus bellied padmanabha in marriage think of him as prajapati the chief of all people when in war think of him as chakradhara the wielder of the sudarshana while on travel think of him as trivikrama conqueror of the three worlds at the time of death think of him as narayana as the dweller in all of creation when meeting a loved one think of him as shridhara the board of lakshmi in a nightmare meditate on govinda the protector of cows when in difficulties think of him as madhusudana the destroyer of madhu in a forest think of him as narasimha the ferocious man lion in the midst of fire think of him as jalasaina the water dweller in turbulent waters think of him as varaha the sacred boar who saved mother earth from the depths of the ocean in the heights of mountains think think of the beloved rama the beloved of the raghu clan while on the move think of him as vamana the dwarf avatara and invoke madhava the sweet lord of everything for every thinkable activity these names of vishnu will dissolve all mortal chains of bondage take a deep breath in and release it exhale all the way out take a deep breath all the way into the core of mother earth and exhale through your crown all the way to the sky remain in the sacred silence for a couple of minutes <laughs> 